Welcome to the real world, real commentaries. Carson's here with me. That's right, Carson is here. This is Cameron. And uh, we are ready to watch Terminator 2 Judgment Day. That's right. Also known uh, as T2. T2. JD. Um, it's uh, Terminator Week. Terminator Zero drops this week. Okay. On Netflix. The anime. And very excited for that. Um, huge fan of this movie. And so we're going to get started. Go ahead and uh, get it. If you're on the DVD menu or Blu-ray menu, I'm going to the uh, theatrical version. And I'm hitting play now. Okay, so we just hit play. Yeah, about 137 the, minute, uh, about 137 minute movie. Right. It's, it's about what you want. I mean, 90 oh, yeah. minutes is the golden rule. Sure. But for those big epic movies like this, it's kind of where you go. Yeah. It's uh, the first Terminator is a great movie. I think I might like it more. Yeah, it's honestly. it's a toss up for me, honestly. Just re having rewatched it pretty blown away by that first movie. It's such a low-budget film. It's just down and dirty, like, night shoots L.A. It feels like they're just kind of running and gunning, you know? Just one of those kind of messy, but, like, perfect low-budget B-movie with A-movie filmmaking. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's great. It's a great one. A huge fan of that one. It, uh... You know, unwittingly launched a franchise. It was not at all intended to be hmm. this big thing. Although James Cameron had a lot of ideas, the, that idea came from a dream he had. That's right. And so um, it's pretty fascinating to see where it's uh, where it's gone. It's basically just a slasher movie. Yeah. About right. about a robot. Yes, robot from the future. Which is a great idea. It is. It is. Yeah, it, I heard he was actually sued by yeah. a the Outer Limits guy. Outer Limits yeah. director. Yeah. Who had the idea of time traveler from the future comes right. to the past. Yes. And then yes. a separate episode was Robot, robot. Assassin. Yeah. So I'll kind of come down to those yeah. ideas. Yeah, there's there's been much talk about that. I don't that. know if you can even trademark that idea. I don't, yet. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's whatever. Like, I don't know. Anyways, great movies. Um first one and the second one the second one i grew up watching these now i've only ever seen terminator t2 and dark fate really oh, oh I've, I've, actually i've seen salvation okay i, I, was I say, have seen salvation I, th I think it was the first one you saw salvation yeah maybe um t2 yeah it's the first r-rated movie i ever watched um okay and it's one of those movies that just stays with you um, here we have a great shot of traffic. Traffic. Here's the traffic shot right here. Classic traffic shot. Opening shot. I love this. And I love how they, of course, you know, are about to juxtapose this with the future. Yep, we love the children the playing. The James Cameron film. He's a genius. One of my favorite filmmakers. I love this transition into the... Yeah, this is really good. Dark future. The swinging girl swinging. Fully upside down. Then you're just hard cut to skeletons in these cars. And this reflects the opening of the first one. The first one starts in the future. This one gives us a specific year. We're not far away now, 2029. 2029. We're pretty close, actually. Only a few years away from this. This is still completely feasible. Absolutely. It seems more feasible every day. <laughs> um, and this opening scene really shows you how much bigger the budget is. Sure. And how far special effects have gone. Because I think the first one holds up really well. But this one, this looks like it could have been made yesterday. I mean, truly. I, I, I feel know, like... I think this looks better than most movies today. It really does. You're right. It's true. It looks even better. And the, a big reason why this movie looks so good is James Cameron has a very interesting filmmaking style Yeah. that is kind of unstylistic. Right. It's very documentarian. Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward. Uh-huh. He just uses the basic languages of cinema uh -huh. to and just tell a story. And it's always blue yeah, he loves and blue, orange. Because right. uh -huh. those are the most cinematic yeah, colors. For sure. Yeah, for first... some reason, the camera just 
Picks up blue and yeah. orange very, very well. Right. That and first this, one is just bathed in blue. Yeah, this opening sequence, this action sequence, is a great showcase of that. Yes. Thing. Yeah. This is incredible stuff. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, it's almost too much stuff it's going It's so on. great, though. It's so I insane. love it. It's supposed to be chaotic, and this is what war is like, you know? Yeah, drop ships coming in. Yeah. Great miniatures. Great miniature work. Great puppetry. Stan Winston, we got a shout out to him. He's just a genius when it comes to this effects stuff and all these Terminators. It's all him. It looks fantastic. Look at that explosion. It's like the Razor Crest. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> and so this is expanding on this whole, you know, future war, and we're finally getting to see future John Connor. We never see future like John the, Connor like in the, the first film. Like the salutes. Yep, they're all saluting him. It's a good little thing. And it's a great reveal. You know, it's all shot from behind initially. It's Ash from Evil Dead. <laughs> it looks kind of like it. <laughs> Who has this actor ever played? Uh, Whatever his name is. No. John Connor. No, he's never again. played John Connor again. He should have. He's got the scar. Should have had his own show or something. Would have been kind of cool to see a young John Connor get the scar in this movie. Would have been kind of neat. Well, we see it in Salvation. See how he gets it. Oh, that's right. Um, this is great. Again, a great opening. You know, kind of setting the stage. Again, kind of reflecting that first movie, but expanding on it even more. And they just do a great job of that. And then. You know, the titles, Arnold. Arnold, I think this is one of Arnold's best performances. I think it actually might be his best performance he's ever given. Um, Linda Hamilton, her her at her finest. She's great in the first one. This one, she just... That, that's the thing about this sequel. It does everything a good sequel should. It expands on the characters. It takes them to new places, de develops them further, expands the, the mythology and the world. It expands on the themes, you know, of fate versus free will and... Um, I love the uh, burning place up. The AI. Suffering. Yeah, this is great imagery. All this I imagery is so just it's seared into your mind. Introducing Edward Furlong, my hero, when I was growing up. <laughs> Edward Furlong, John Connor, this kid, man. He's the best. Yeah, people will defend this movie ravenously. Like kind of kind of in the way people defend Star Wars a little bit. Oh yeah. I mean it's one of those groundbreaking films. It truly is. Brad, F Brad Fidel, we got to talk about him for a second. The music by ba Brad Fidel is so iconic. For sure. It it's so simple, yet just brilliant in every way. And it's got that great percussive, heavy intensity to it, yet that very soft melody. You know, simple, it's really, simple elegance, I call it. It's everything you could want in a movie theme. So memorable. It's existential, yet so accessible. <laughs> to quote Elf. And there it is. Look at that. Imagery just, again. I love, I, again, this is another reason I love opening credits, because you can have this kind of just imagery that's kind of just... It's all atmosphere. <laughs> it's all, it's all atmosphere. You know, it doesn't really make sense. It, it's not, you're not... This isn't part of the story, really, but it's just, it's just there, and it just, it works. And then we open on the grill of this 18-wheeler. The lights come on, and it rolls away. And here is our introduction, our reintroduction, I should say, if you've seen the first film, which I had not. You know, this was this was my introduction to Terminator. Okay. Um, which is fine. And I think, yeah, it, 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 it's perfect. You get a little Dunkin' Donuts. It explains everything Dunkin very... Dunkin' Donuts product placement there. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have them. That's right. It explains everything very well. If you haven't seen the first one, uh, but yet, uh, like I was saying earlier, it builds on the first one and everything it did. How do you and feel, I like. How do you feel about this method of time travel? I love it. It's so. I don't know. It makes sense. I guess I don't know. It, it, time travel doesn't make sense, really. It has to be organic. It has to yes. be like, organic. Yes, and I love that it's into the side of a truck. Like, you never, like, in the future, none of this is here. So you, you could end up anywhere. Right. Like, like Kyle Reese is, like, in the middle of an alley, like, up above an alley. He, like, falls down yeah. several feet. Right. Because um, wherever your geometric one. space in the future yes. is, that's where you'll be. Yes, exactly. So interesting to start. I, I think, like, movies of this era, kind of late 80s, Amblin era of, of movies. Sure. This Usually you'll start with movies, your kid. But... In the suburbs. Right, right. Yeah. But this starts kind of with our 
somewhat of a villain? Well, what we think is the villain. If you've seen the first one, you think, okay, here's our bad guy coming right. back. It's Arnold again. He's, he's you know, ready to, you know, do some murders. Do some terminating. And it's... <laughs> It's great that he walks into a place like this, uh, a po- heavy, heavily populated bar, um, where people are just kind of wandering around, looking around. All their around. glances are so great. I know. I love it. They just don't know what to think. You know, they're just dumbfounded. Looks founded. like James Cameron. Yeah. I think that bit. is him, actually. Is it? Yeah, pretty sure. No, I don't think he ever cameos in any of his films. No, it's not him. But it looks like him. That'd be great. That, that would exactly be the character I'd want to play right. in a movie like this. That's one of those iconic lines, I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Of course. Um, great moment. And then this moment, of course, with the uh, putting out the cigar right on his skin. And, of course, he has no reaction at all. And it's a pretty great effect. <laughs> much to the shock. Yeah, with the smoke and everything, it's, it's really good. <laughs> And then this little scuffle happens <laughs> through the window onto the burners. This is one of my favorites on the hot, on the hot stove. It's great. Yeah, this is this is a great intro- reintroduction of this character or introduction if you haven't seen the first one. Yeah, it's a really interesting way I think to shoot an action scene because it feels very confound. Uh huh. It's. Not it's not densely populated. There's not a ton of quick cutting. Uh huh. It's just like it's again, your, again, he has a very documentarian way of shooting. Yeah, things, it's, so it's your, very you're you're almost in the shoes of the Terminator. Yeah. You even get his POV in several of those shots, which I like. You get to really see just how he sees this. It's it's again, yeah, you're you're, you're right. It's very calm, cool, collected, and then that music cue, bad to the bone. Oh man. <laughs> and the, you know the leather you know he doesn't wear the leather you know this this look is kind of the terminator look but he doesn't this is not what he's wearing in the first movie so terminator 2 is a much more it's a movie full of a lot of more iconography I and think. it's more accessible to a wider audience i feel like you know that first one's very much for genre fans sure um this one's more of a, a kind of it's a blockbuster action, action blockbuster yeah. right exactly the, I mean, the opening sequence is the most blockbustery open. Yeah. <laughs> he just t- he just snatches it right out of his hand, and then you think, oh, he's gonna, he's about to, you know, the the T one Terminator would have just annihilated this guy, but I like how they're they're making him more heroic already. Just you know, I just want the sunglasses. That's it. And again, there's no real reason, right? I mean. Why would he wear I mean, sunglasses? I mean, you could say that it's a reference to T1. Right, but this is a totally different Terminator. <laughs> that well, Terminator was destroyed. Yeah, it's just like the kind of reference I think you would see today. Yes. In like I, a legacy sequel. It totally works. <laughs> it totally works. Why does it this just work doesn't for you make and, sense. And something else? That's what I'm saying. Logically. Yeah. <laughs> but it's too cool. So you just let it go. Always do what's cool. The Zack Snyder rule. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it makes sense. No, no, it just has to look cool. And then here's our introduction to... It does matter, actually. The T-1000. Things should make sense. But. <laughs> they don't always have to make sense. Um, so this is this is our villain. Uh, well, not this guy. This is just this a regular police officer investigating something. But we're about to be introduced to our... I love the graffiti. Set great. Yeah. It already looks like the apocalypse is going to happen. Right, yeah. It's already on its way, you know? It's very cool. <laughs> Look at that. Right in the middle of a fence. See, I love that. I love those little touches. Like, it could have been anywhere. They're like, let's make it in the middle of a fence. And we're going to have to burn a f- I don't know how they did this effect, but it's like yeah. they actually burnt a fence away. It's just a good visual. Mm-hmm. The great Robert Patrick as the T-1000. Robert Patrick, of course. Famous villain from Spy Kids. Oh, yes, yes. We know him well from Spy Kids. Which I love. I yeah. love his role in Spy Kids. I think he's, he's, a, terrific. he's a really good actor. <laughs> he has that... 
cold, calculating, steely demeanor. Yes, he is much more of an infiltration unit than yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's he's right. He's a normal looking guy, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, this is great. And the interactions he'll have with characters later. He's already really in the like, database. It's yep. Cool. Yep. He's already in it. He's already got it. He's a lot of visual. Mm-hmm. And now you're into the Amblin star. <laughs> <in the movie. laughs> right. Suburban and so mom. here we have Miss uh, Goldstein, Jeanette Goldstein, I think is her name, uh, actress from Aliens. She plays Vasquez. Oh, that's right. Hey, Vasquez. Oh, my goodness. You ever been mistaken for ma'am? <laughs> no, have you? She's great I in this. I didn't even recognize her. Yeah, she looks totally different. Um, and then there's our, there's our John Connor intro. Um, what loving parents they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is the typical American. Uh, it's great family though. Here. It's great. Yeah, you know, the and foster this is, parents to. This um, is Xander Berkeley. He's an actor I really like. He was on the show Twenty Four. He's been in several other things oh, really? that I've liked. Yeah, he's he's really good too. Small role here, but does a great job. He's kind of a deadbeat dad, foster dad. And then ninety one. This is ninety one. Pre-teen She's not my mother. Todd is kids. a pretty great opening. Line. Oh, absolutely, because this is this is a mother son story. You know, the first one is a is a you know romance between Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor. Sure. This one is a mother son and, and a you, father son. You gotta son love dynamic. it when a line transitions to the answer. Yes. To whatever. Love that. Whatever the setup of that line Set was. Set it up quick. Pay it off quick. And She's not my mother, Todd, and here is his mother, Sarah Connor, who. This doctor, who's the doctor from the first one, um, I forget this actor's name, he's really good in this role though, and he's playing the same psychiatrist that she meets in the first film, when uh, he, he, you know, <laughs> he's in there with Kyle Reese as he's explaining what's going to happen in the future, and he calls him a loon, and now he thinks much the same of Sarah, who's in this psychiatric ward. Um, Sarah Connor is such a great action protagonist. Oh, yeah. It's such an interesting continuation of the first Terminator movie. Right. Because ending that movie the way that it did uh-huh. is so interesting. And, yes. And just picking up again here right. is just very, very cool. It's uh-huh. kind of where you would where you would imagine a, car- a survivor of a slasher movie would end up. Right. She just looks insane. Oh, man. It's just so good. So good. Linda Hamilton is on another level in this film. Like I said, I love that the performance is so different. Because after everything she went the, through... I love this... Uh, the, this the orderlies doctor, over the there? Orderlies, yeah. yeah. They're yeah, hilarious. They are good. Populating your movie with... Great background actors. Big personalities actors. Uh-huh. is yep. fun. Mm-hmm. For sure. Makes everything feel more alive. It definitely does. This creepo. You can tell he's a creepo oh, right yeah. off the bat. 100%. Everything about him's creepy. Yep. To protect and serve. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> I really like what this movie... What it's tr- kind of saying just visually yep. with the whole suburban uh-huh. town. Uh-huh. The trusted police officer. Yep. Literally, like, literally like people like watering their grass <laughs> yes. and like living... <laughs> Living the the modern family life, uh-huh. the American dream. Yeah, it's very cool. Quickly becomes a nightmare for this uh, this family here. The way he's so cordial, I love. It's just again, you know, the performance is so interesting because whenever you see him by himself, he's a robot. He's very cold. He's very you know quick movements and robotic. But in this scene, he's so personable and nice and just you know. Uh, it's a really, really interesting, nuanced performance that doesn't get enough praise, I think. <laughs> and here we go, back to our protagonist, in my opinion. People would say Arnold's the protagonist. I think John oh, Connor's the protagonist. I would say Sarah Connor's the protagonist. Well, personally. Sarah, for sure. Yeah. There's kind of three, I think she's I guess. definitely the overall... Well, yeah, main she's character, right? Sure. Of the Terminator franchise, right. which is, I think, kind of weird that it's a franchise at all. It is, but 
the first movie, she's the protagonist. In my opinion, John Connor becomes the protagonist here, but she's definitely a co-protagonist, I guess you could say. Co-tagonist. Co-tagonist. I love John Connor's buddy. His buddy, his mullet buddy, red-headed mullet buddy, is great. <laughs> Huge fan. And I like, so this is setting up, you know, John Connor obviously is very rebellious, but he has all well, these skills, man. Being He's re- got skills. Being rebellious, I think, is the number one character trait of <laughs> the rebel most, leader of mo- the future. Yes, 100%. 100%. And this explains what, what he thinks of her, you know. Um, he really does think she's crazy. He doesn't, he doesn't believe anything she's said to him his whole life. That she's basically kind of tried to train him to be this. Did you ever leader. watch the um, the series? The, I think it's called the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Watch the first episode. Couldn't get past it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm a fan. I like the idea of what it was establishing. Sarah Connor getting with all these guys yes. that can teach John right. how to become uh-huh. a future. Yeah, and that's mentioned here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. It's mentioned here. That's yeah. a great idea. It is. And then, this is an iconic monologue, I feel like. It's some great dialogue here. And she, the way she delivers it, I mean, it's just insane. You know, it's, it's great. And I like that it's her watching it. It's, a, it's like there's layers to this. It's really interesting. Right, it's a good way of establishing the status quo mm-hmm. and continuing... The narrative in right. the same scene, seeing where she, where also, she's been. Also, it's interesting that they established that it's they it's these three same people. Uh-huh. It's the the clerk guy who's yeah. always checking up on her, and uh-huh. then it's the doctor, and right. it's her. Yeah. Yep. So we've had a clear like narrative with uh-huh. these three characters, and we're so. getting a peek into her mind. I mean, we're really getting a peek into. She's kind of fixing her what's hair. yeah. She's what's, doing everything she can to. Uh-huh. Look unlike that person. Yes, right. While looking at what she uh-huh. knows to be the truth. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's it's amazing, an amazing, very well shot, and uh, just that slow pan in on this is really good. It's crazy. I mean, it's a really like I said just unnerving performance you know it's like almost hard to watch like you don't <laughs> like this is our hero for this movie this is crazy i like that the camera pushes in and zooms in yes. on, onto the screen as yes. the scene goes uh-huh. and also in the interrogation yes, room that the camera is moving also too zooming. uh-huh i guess this guy over here is the camera operator for that I don't scene know. i guess so i like that tupperware container Blue. Everything's blue. You gotta keep blue. the blue. Keep the blues, man. This is the blue. Steely movie. blue. Make, their, make their name blue. tags blue. Mm-hmm. Make the his keep, shirt is make blue. Make the picture blue. It's all blue. <laughs> blues and grays. Her eyes are blue. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you can't really control that. No. Could now. <laughs> Do whatever you want now. CGI. The scene has a great turn in it that's about to happen. Um, yeah, it has very naturalistic dialogue. Naturalistic dialogue, again, very well shot. I like. There's again layers just in the in the visual. Look, now we're outside the room. Here's the camera mm-hmm. that's recording the room. You know, and here's there's the camera the guy. guy. Yeah, then that's it right there. Stevie Spielberg. <laughs> Yeah, lots of guys checking out on this. Love it. And I love, you know, this one leans more into the technology. There's technology everywhere in this. The first movie, you don't really see. That was all all one terrific shot. Yeah. Because now we have have that dual shot. That was really cool. Yep. And now we're moving to a section of the film that's interesting because this is a new character. Um, We're about to be introduced to. And again, the scene transition was from science lab incident to this them kind of talking about yeah her past they're all computer into, computer screens yeah. to this computer transitioning screen. all... into this mm-hmm. seamlessly which is another blue environment 
Right. Everyone's wearing blue. Right. Very seamless. It, it, you know, the, the pacing of this movie, it's not, it's not as relentless and fast paced as the first, but it has a really solid pacing to it still. And this is uh, Joe it's all, Morton. It's all been one shot so far. Yeah, still one shot. Yeah, pretty, we're still we're gonna, gonna keep great. following him all the Thanks way into the Thanks for leaving the door open for the camera guy. We yeah, that. right. Uh, this is Joe Morton as Miles Dyson. I gotta say everything in Arnold's accent. <laughs> I, guess, I don't know why. <laughs> I hear these names in his voice always. Does he ever say Miles Dyson? Oh yeah, yeah. He's gonna say Miles Dyson here in a little bit. Um, I like that door. Yeah, it's a big a, thick door. I like that it's uh, you can see. All these yeah, sets and everything are incredible. And the and the props, you know, I have this microchip. I own this. <laughs> the actual microchip. Shout out to Josh, my buddy, got me the uh, actual microchip from Terminator. Um, it's and a so, keychain. Yeah, on a keychain. <laughs> and this is showing us how there are still Terminators because T one. You know, I mean. I mean, in, I guess ambiguously, but there really shouldn't be any more Terminators. If Sarah Connor knows all this, and it, it, there should it should be a way to prevent it. But um, Miles Dyson is the one who finds the Terminator's arm from the end of the first one, and he's going to create the Terminators. These two movies create a perfect loop. Or they actually, this one actually ends the loop, in I'm my loop. opinion. I'm caught in a time loop. We'll talk about that later. There should be no sequels after this. Unless they're post-Judgment Day, then they're technically prequels. <sighs> this is where Sarah loses it, sadly. Yeah, exactly. And it's all driven by her love for John Connor. And John Connor, to her, is not just her son. He's the only hu hope humanity has. Sure. <laughs> so, she's the definition of the overprotective There's mom. some great high acting. Yeah. Some great choke acting here, too. <laughs> I think because she was actually choking him. Dang, her team was on her quick. Yeah. This isn't the first time. I mean, dealt people with talk this. about, like, oh, can like the skinny girl beat up all the you know, big guys? Right. There's like four guys on her, and right. she's still struggling. I know. Well, she does those pull-ups every day. She's just <laughs> ripped. I love how dangerous that shot is. The, yes. the camera on the motorcycle. Yes, love it. Those shaky cams uh -huh. that are close to the ground. Yep. <laughs> I like that. Look at that. That head turn, and he just up, oh, locked on. I didn't. It's pretty, pretty lucky the, that he was driving right past. I mean, I know we know. He knew he, went he was to the in the area. He went to yeah, the house before, he was in the area. <laughs> the car wreck fine. Yeah. <laughs> just causing chaos. You know, that's the thing that's cool about the T-800. He's just caused chaos. He doesn't care. He, he's not like the T-1000. He's, he's very he's calculated. Un, he's unsophisticated. He's very unsophisticated. He's, he's the most... He stands out in the most. You know, like, in terms of Terminators, he's a, he's a musket. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's a big shotgun. That's why he carries a big shotgun yeah, in this the movie. The T-1000 is like a sniper rifle. Yes, exactly. A concealable sniper uh -huh, rifle. Uh-huh, right. Concealed weapon. <laughs> oh, and speaking of concealed weapons, I love that the shotgun is in a flower box. That's I kind of, I, I kind of would have loved genius. to have seen him go into a flower shop. Yes, yeah. With the shotgun. I guess he probably just jacket. stole them, but he probably I'd did. like to think that he tried to buy them. <laughs> it's pretty I like smart, that he's, he's asking, asking these out, kids. Yeah, yeah, asking the kids. Uh -huh. He actually beat the game. It's pretty cool. The adults would get a little more suspicious. I feel like. With the kids, he, you know, they don't think twice. They see an authority figure and they just answer. Unless you're I John think Connor. I remember playing this video game one time in a arcade really? somewhere it's in, the, cool. in the 90s. This is all far before my time. Yeah. These things do not exist these anymore. Are, these are the good old days. There's no place such as this. <laughs> and there's that meme that goes around about this kid. He saved the human race by instinctually lying to a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. And of course, they think you know he's after us because we just stole a bunch of money from the ATM, but that's not what's going on here, John. Something far more dangerous. <laughs> Throws that kid out of the way. That's the last time we see of redheaded mullet sidekick kid. It's 
too bad. He's a true American hero. He is. He is. Hundred percent. Have you ever been in the back alleys of the mall before? I have not. I have. Have you? One time, I like that guy. One time, <laughs> um, mom and I were in a mall mm-hmm. after they closed. Really? We were like in a store too late or something. <laughs> we came out and all of the doors were locked oh, no. to get out. We're like, what do we do? <laughs> we couldn't find anyone for a little bit. That's funny. And then we found one like janitor who was like, oh, you can come out the back. And he just <laughs> took us to like, the, it looks just like this. Yeah. What a standoff right here. This poor guy caught in the crossfire. Get down. Your first indication that Arnold is the hero. Tells him to get down. Look, protects him. I love that. Oh, no. The janitor. I love that he was holding coffee. You have to have the coffee splatter. Really ruined that jacket. Totally. Love this effect of these bullet holes that are created in this liquid metal character here (laughs) finally gets him down (laughs) there it is look at that it's pretty terrific pretty great computer computer morphing effect yes this movie it it really did break a lot of ground with when it comes to cgi but i love that it doesn't rely on the cgi it just uses it when you know when it needs to it's because it's so expensive it is extremely expensive and time consuming it's a great little little battle here. Our first battle between the Terminators in the mall. I always love it when it's in a public place like shot. this. Yeah, that was a it's great a moment. It's a useless but amazing shot. Well, later it makes sense. The silver when We guy. see what he looks like underneath all this. Okay. I just like people reacting to these crazy... I always think of this when I'm in a mall now. Ever since I've seen this movie, I would think, what if two Terminators started fighting <laughs> right in the middle of the mall? It'd be crazy. And this, you know, this is a, a great, you know, now it's a chase movie. Like, the first movie, basically the whole movie is a big chase. And this movie has several chases throughout it. This being our first. Starting on the dirt bike. And I like that the, the team of thousands really, is so He fast. looks like he's running very fast. He is. I mean, this, you know. And that motorcycle is clearly pretty slow. But right. Managed to make it look like he's really running super fast. It did. And they do a great job, you know, there's obviously stunt drivers here doing all this. And the, the, the camera angles and everything will make it work really well. <laughs> That's a great moment, too. I just, the idea of these ordinary people just getting absolutely wrecked, you know? Yeah. I yeah. just like that. It, interrupting it adds so interrupting much, people's ordinary yeah, lives. Yeah, it adds so much reality. Because that's... That's what the first movie is, right? I mean, Sarah Connor is just a waitress, you know, right. and she's thrown into this crazy situation. And just seeing all these little moments are really fun. We've, we've transitioned now to a more orangey palette because mm-hmm. we're all outside. Right, and right, in the daylight. Because the heat is on. Heat is on. This is a more and that's another thing that's different situation. about this movie. This movie is all, well, not all, but a lot of it is in the daylight. And the first movie is all at night. Sure. Um, so it's again, it's setting itself apart. I like when sequels do that. They don't just try to repeat what the first one did. They actually, you know, do something different. Hmm. And I don't know if a lot of movies shoot in this the area better? in LA because it's just you can do it whenever you want or what, <laughs> what the deal is, but a lot of movies shoot in this. Dang. It's a great moment. Look at that. It's an amazing the truck jump. I mean, Eat your heart Crazy. out, Chris Nolan. <laughs> right. Yeah, the truck flip. Give me a truck jump any day of our truck flip. The truck flip is still great, though. <laughs> and again, the music here is got, so good. He's got such a good stare. He does. He does. A very cold, menacing very, stare. Uh, determined. Look. Yes. I like that the T-1000 isn't, like, trying to destroy Arnold. It's yeah, no, mission. he's got a mission. Yeah, his mission is not to, to yeah. you know, fight the T-800. To, his mission uh, is to terminate John Connor at all costs. Yeah. If this other guy gets in the way, I'll, you know, push him out of my way. But that's, That was a good shot. I like yeah, that one a that lot. was a good shot, wasn't it? Moving the camera while in motion is uh-huh. very cool. There's that's a shot like that in... Um, uh, that new 
F1 movie that's coming out. Oh, the Brad Pitt one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the trailer, there's a shot just like that. Okay. That's awesome. The, the energy and, and the, you know, the speed. And I love the, the flip. <laughs> the, the, the reload flip to me. Look at that. I mean, that is so cool. It's pretty great. Again, do what looks cool. I mean, that's practical, too. That's very practical. you got to keep one hand on More the practical than wearing sunglasses indoors. For sure. That happened to one of our work trucks once. Did it really? It did. Whole roof came off? Yeah. It was in one of our trailers. Oh, no. It was too tall. It was like an enclosed trailer. <laughs> it was too tall to go into, like... I don't know if it was a tunnel or... Oh, here, here comes the big was. jump. Look at that! Oh, man. Insane. Insane. Insane that someone actually did that. This is very gorilla style yeah, chase. It's, yeah, it's still... It's very frantic rough. and dirty and, yeah. you know, shaky at some points. You know, it, it mixes all of it in, though. Because, like, they have shots like oh, this. Oh, that was totally a different guy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's very, like, um, it's not trying to be cinematic in the middle of the chase. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's it not trying to have mm-hmm. every moment be iconic. Yeah, exactly. It's just kind of rough and gruff and, uh-huh. and again, kind of documentary and just showing whatever's happening. Yep. And except for moments explosion. like this that are like, okay, this is our Boom. moment. This is our cinematic shot. Yeah, exactly. It was the great uh, climax to the action sequence. Here. I love the tire. The tire on fire, man. It's a fire tire. <laughs> awesome. What a great way to bring our, our characters together, you know? Yeah, it's kind of a uh, and here it is. Kyle here's Reese, Kyle Reese, Sarah Connor situation. Yeah, here's the uh, what he what he looks like underneath. Nice job starting it low low poly in uh-huh. the distance. Yep, that's still like wow, looks good. Incredibly difficult effect to pull off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so now we've had our action scene. We need to have a little our little explosion. dialogue moment where we figure out what's going on here in case, uh, you know. To me, like I think John still Hunter. the best expositional scene, maybe in any movie, is from the first Terminator. Yeah, in the car. In the middle of the everything. chase. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. The, the bullet holes in the jacket, that close up there. His face, he's just like, it's all real. It's true, all of it. Everything your mother told you. The Terminators, the war. <laughs> it's all real. Harrison Ford would be a good John Connor. He would. He would be a great Terminator, too. <laughs> it's just so what a kid would do. Like, he wants to right. like, just kind of poke at him and figure out what's going on. So cool. <laughs> Edward Furlong, to me, again, he's the hero of the movie. He, he's one of the best child actors. He's ever. very well cast. He looks like Sarah Connor. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Everything he has to play in this movie, there's so much, you know. Just so the, we're, at, we're now out of the furnace and back into the blue. Yes, it's nighttime now. We can cool down. Yep. Just cool it. Liquid metal. This is a very impractical conversation to be having on a motorcycle. <laughs> right. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. Right. That's fine. That's movie magic, baby. Yeah. yeah. If you're right in, if you're right next to someone, you could hear them. As long as you're not going too fast. They're not going too fast. This is another great moment. This, you know, again, these, these little scenes that just, they build the characters, they build 
they develop the characters, the relationship. I forgot to point out earlier, there's a shot with John Connor riding on his bike, and then it's the <laughs> T-800 and through the alley. Yeah. You can see both of them. Right. That's a great shot. That is a good shot. For sure. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, the, the gimmick of the T-800 having to follow John Connor's orders. Yeah, we're about to get that. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of that as well. This moment's interesting. Um, it implies that the T-1000 went back to the foster parents' home um, while the deadbeat dad was watching TV, killed the mom, took her place... And basically is waiting for John to come back or call, as he's doing now. And then, I love this, you know, the imitating the voice, which we got in the first movie, when he imitated uh, Sarah Connor's mom. Now he's imitating John Connor. But this T-1000, he's, he's got a leg up. He, can't just, he doesn't just imitate the voice, he imitates the body. This um, pull-out reveal is great, too. Yes. So oh, good. This is such a crazy moment. So it's freaky. That is such a weird <laughs> shot. <laughs> Look at that. It's clearly all a practical yeah. prosthetic. 100% practical. Into this digital yep. shot. Mm -hmm. Look at that reflection on that thing. Look at her face in it. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's outstanding. Clearly a digital hand butt. Very cool. But it looks so it's good. It's a composited hand butt. Yeah, really interesting effect. Now, what confuses me is his clothes, because he took those clothes. Not necessarily. Just, he, he could have just them. looked at the guy. Yeah, I guess that's... He just took his gun. I guess that's possible. Samples anything with physical contact, that's what he just said. <laughs> this is... You know, I love... You know... Explaining everything that the audience is going to ask. That's what John Connor's doing right now. He's our audience surrogate. Sure. You know, it's always good to have that in a film like this where you have to kind of explain things. Here's some images from 1984's The Terminator. Are those actually shots from the movie or are they. Uh, I think they. Well. They look like they I were a big shot. Might be. For this. I don't know. I think his hair was different. Now, now is where Sarah goes. I gotta get out of here at all costs. I gotta He's get back. Out of here. <laughs> He's back. My worst fears have been realized, and whatever it takes, I have to get out of this insane asylum and get my son back. Do you care? These cops aren't quite as great as the cops in the first one. You got, uh, what's his name? I think it's, um, well, Lance Henriksen, who played Bishop in Aliens, mm. as one of the cops in the first one. And I forget the other actor's name. Paul Winfield, I want to say, or something like that. It's Lieutenant Traxler. Okay. Both great kind of uh, secondary characters there. And here we're getting a little more backstory. I like I like the T-800 just kind of scanning the horizon. He does this a lot, just standing very still and kind of just scanning whilst uh, John kind of dumps his uh, trauma on this uh, surrogate father figure. Well, I don't think he really becomes his father figure until oh, yeah, the no, end. No, I agree. It's more, but like this his, is, it's more like his pet. But every scene is building that idea, I feel like. Sure. Um, yeah, they're just getting to know each other still here. But he, th there's a real bonding moment that's about to happen here um, between these two. As John decides we got to get mom out of the insane asylum T-800 says no way <laughs> I 
And then, you know, two guys, two guys see this, uh, this, you know, young kid in trouble. And they got to come help him. <laughs> it's John's problem. I mean, it's his, his fault. The situation yeah, happens. True, true. But, you know, <laughs> he doesn't think it through, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is such a great idea of, you know, John Connor's the one that reprogrammed him, so of course he has to follow John Connor's orders. I wonder Even. if future John Connor thought about that. I don't think he did. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> Every kid's dream. You gotta set, you gotta <laughs> on one I love this. This humor. There's little little moments of humor like this, where he's like, uh, you know, got his got his, his foot. Off the one foot off the ground, he's like, "Oh, put your leg down." It's <laughs> great. It's a punk kid. He's a total punk kid. It's totally what a punk kid would do with a Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> he puts it on the ground. <laughs> he puts the gun on the ground. I think this, this is. A little I moment. think this might be why people like Dra Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy so much. Yeah, he's got it's a Terminator kind of that, vibe. Um, it's mm -hmm. that taking everything <laughs> at its face value yeah. very literally. Uh, sense of humor. <laughs> and then here's the one rule. I love this. You know, you're, you're not a Terminator anymore. You can't kill anyone. That's such a great rule to for, that, that, that you know a kid would give a machine like this um because <laughs> you just can't trust me on this and it again it, it makes our it is interesting that, more heroic yeah it's interesting that john would say that though mm -hmm. well they almost just killed the guy that's why yeah And so now our Terminator can't kill anyone throughout the rest of the film. And the way he gets around that is very interesting. John Paper is a terrible idea. To have right. A Terminator who can't terminate. Right, exactly. But it totally works for this movie. Because we have two Terminators. Exactly. Sicko. Yeah. We love this creep. He's so bad. Yeah. He gets his comeuppance. Yeah. That's what, that's what we love. Right. He's got those glasses, those creepy glasses. Yeah. It looks like he's wearing two glasses. They're so thick. Those <laughs> lenses are so thick. Yeah. I mean, they're like the thickest glasses you could possibly get on a guy. So gross. Yeah. And I love her just cold, dead eye. I mean, it, again, <laughs> the acting is just incredible. The worst kinds of people running places like this. Yeah. And it's all an act. She's got a plan in place already. She's got a paperclip and a dream. Just that's like my guy. That's all you need. That's all you need when you're Sarah Connor. Lighting in this scene is good, too. Yeah, very blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the, a lot of these like single light sources. Yeah, though. the single light sources, I think, are very intentional for the right. special effects. Yeah. To help them more easily calculate the uh, trajectory of light for these yep. upcoming incredible visual effects. Like yeah. That. And you can hide a lot of stuff in shadow, you know, yeah. stuff like that. It's very clean, clear mm -hmm. lighting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another mullet. That's our second mullet, at least, that we've seen in the film. <laughs> 
the only thing that dates the, f- the movie, really, I guess. Well, it's supposed to be the 80s. Yeah, no, it's 94, or, yeah. I think. Is Whatever. It's supposed to, it's to it's released in 91, came out, but I think it's supposed to be set in 94. It's supposed to be the, the date that it's in, though. Yeah. So, dating it is fine. Yeah, exactly. For time travel stories. Exactly. exactly. It's a period piece, really. It is. 100%. <laughs> now it is. And this guard, he's really well cast, too, you, you know... Your secondary characters, especially ones that you need to remember, you need to get a face that you can remember. You get this big mustachioed uh, security guard. Yeah. Very memorable face. The the Paul Blart. Yep. And he's a twin. That's how they were able to achieve the shot. Yeah. Later in this movie. Pretty cool. Great moment right here. I've never noticed the smudge of his shoe on that. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's pretty great. Little detail. What a weird coffee machine. Yeah. I don't see these anymore. Look at that. I mean, that just looks crazy. <laughs> my lucky day and then this is this is the, the freakiest kill of the movie to me just right through that it's a great puppet oh look at that oh and the way he's twitching and everything yeah. it's just oh oh man gruesome drag him into the closet yeah kind of a um John Carpenter's The Thing villain. Right, going right, on. yes. With the shape-shifting uh-huh. paranoia. Definitely. It's funny you bring up Carpenter because, you know, James Cameron worked on Escape from New York. Right. He was a matte painter on that film. Yeah. And uh, pretty sure he was a pretty big Carpenter fan because that first Terminator has that Escape from New York feel, mm-hmm. that kind of mm-hmm. on-the-run, low-budget shot at night, you know, thing. The broken handle. There it is. Right in the face. Look at that blood splatter. Oh, yes. We love to see this. Dang. This is... This is so satisfying. Oh no, he's smeared blood all over his shirt. <laughs> I know, his white shirt and white pants. <laughs> really makes that impact all the more graphic. Definitely. Gets the baton. <laughs> she's she kinda, is on a she's mission She's kind of excited now. about it, too. Oh, 100%. So this is cool. what she's been waiting for. Yeah. She is on a mission. And what's interesting about you know the trajectory of her character throughout this film is... She basically becomes a Terminator. Sure. She, you know, very much loses her humanity and is only set on a mission. I like that she, like, there's clear stakes for her. Right, personal stakes. In terms of, I I don't want to get caught by the security guard. Uh Uh-huh. But the audience knows he's more than just a security guard. Yes. So the stakes are really raised. Exactly. For us, while still there being stakes for her. Uh Uh-huh. And I like that shot of, of T-800 and, and John on their way, like reminding you, okay, they're coming, shot. but are they going to get there in time to either, you know, stop Sarah from killing everyone or from her being killed? Great butt shot, hold the butt. <laughs> of the butt shot. <laughs> Oh, this is great. It's a good shot. Isn't that good? Look at that. Look at that rack focus there. Oh goodness, it's blue. Beautiful. There's more blue in this movie. Yes. We should count everything that's blue. We'd be, we'd be counting all day. 
<laughs> yeah, I like the Terminator would never ask what he would never, he wouldn't really ask that, but sure. it's just again it makes sense for the his AI has uh, been corrupted moment. and compromised sure. by sure. future John Connor. Well, he's a he's a learning machine, so yeah. it kind of makes sense that he would ask questions sometimes. <laughs> right in the kneecaps, <laughs> just takes him out. <laughs> This is a great. It's the most straightforward way, way of dealing with a situation. Uh huh. Get some ammo. I like that too. Like little touches like that. Most movies wouldn't show him He'll getting live. some more rounds. He'll live is a great line. He'll live, yeah. Oh man, look at that! Another another shot of a screen. You know, I like these. Like. Mm -hmm. It just adds to the the whole aesthetic. The idea of technology being everywhere. So of course before we had screens in our pockets we carried around with us everywhere. <laughs> the doctor just like get me out of this situation however you possibly can. See the doctor has a red tag. Everyone else has a blue uh -huh, tag. Right, yep. Yeah. Because he's real. He's the real source of violence. Yes. This movie has, this movie has <laughs> Sarah Connor so tactical in yeah. how she handles this. This movie has an interesting layer of subtext. It's hard to tell if it's intentional or not, but. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's what uh, it's saying about society, policing, and institution, <laughs> yeah. and authority. And yep, big time. Just the, the, the color coding of characters, mm -hmm. and, and which characters are bad guys are usually like the trusted authority figures. Uh -huh. Yep, it's interesting. It is. Barefoot very, running. There's nothing like barefoot running. Oh yeah, I love it. John McClane did it. Uh huh. Terracotta did it. Absolutely. <laughs> this is great. And this is where everything comes to a head. Right here is is this uh, breaks the key. No way to get in now. She's she's home free. She's she's it's such a good she's shot. Made it. She's her, made it's, it. It's her. It's on her face too. It's victory so for her. I mean, she's she's out. She's uh, she's won. Yeah. She's gonna get her son back, and they're gonna they're gonna be fine. <laughs> There's our elevator going down. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Oh. There's a lot of Love cues. It. There's a lot of cues from Spielberg here. Oh sure. Of the uh, like everyone talks about the Spielberg reaction uh -huh, phase. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of her. Yeah. But it's situation. done in its own way, you know. He he does the slow mo there, and she falls oh. down, and that was quite the tackle. Yeah. These guys have no clue what's coming. <laughs> they don't even see the T eight hundred. She's just oh, she thinks wow. they're all gone. These oh, are some great stunts. Wow. I mean, these stunt guys. I mean... That guy's definitely dead. I think all these guys are dead. <laughs> no, they're just knocked unconscious. Hey, did she break his glasses? It's very specific. Yep, no more glasses throughout the rest of the film. Thank you. Now he can actually act. <laughs> Love this realization of what's going on. Oh, and there's the line! Yes! <laughs> the Kyle Reese line. <laughs> He had to have been programmed with that one, I feel like. I guess. I don't know why or how, but I guess. I'm sure it was on the tapes that she recorded for John. She's like, this is the first thing your dad said to me. So make sure the Terminator says this. <laughs> okay. Send him back to help. It's a bit much. Maybe, maybe the best visual effect ever. Incredible. The right going, through the, the bars. Right through the bars. <laughs> I love that reaction yeah. shot. Oh, it's so good.
truly jaw jaw dropping effect. Yeah. Another great reaction shot. You want to that Stuck doctor on the glasses. The yep. Barely slides in there. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Open up. Oh, see, that's right a, that's a very carpenter effect. Yeah, hundred percent. This is right out of the thing. Yeah. And it's all real. Yeah, that was not. That, this is CGI, but that that was not. Again, the the Combining again, they're using effects. they're using the effects the right way. You don't have to have a CGI head blown apart. You can do that practically. Right. When it comes back together, you need CGI. So it's it's just being very specific about when to use CGI and when not to. And movies today, they just... Limit, well, limitations they do always, it all. always create the best art. 100%. I like that she just takes the gun right out of his pants and just starts blowing him away. Oh! Got her shoulder blade. She's not a Terminator. No. But she's on her way. This is the wildest day of Sarah Connor's <laughs> life. Of John Connor's life. I mean, she's already had this experience. Yeah, I guess that's true. John Connor's the one who's like, what is going on? This is all real? You're right, Mom. I'm sorry. I didn't believe you. I mean, your mom is crazy. But. <laughs> she is crazy, but she's also right. Yeah. You can be crazy and right. There's an iconic, that was a great iconic shot. Iconic uh, walking shot. Yeah. That low angle they got on him. I like that he's just, just droopy. Yeah. Just liquidy. Yes. It's cool. Like now, jelly. they didn't even have to do that. He could have come back up fully formed. Oh, yeah. They could this, have just opened the doors and he's running. Look at this awesome running yeah. shot where he morphs. Yes. Look at this. I don't know how they do that. Crazy. It's incredible. <laughs> it looks amazing. It really does. I like that John's the reloader. You know, he's back there just reloading all the weapons. He knows exactly how to handle them and reload them and all this stuff he's like 13 most grown men have no clue <laughs> most grown men have no clue <laughs> I like the backwards you know the it's like how can we do a unique car chase well let's go backwards the whole way out of a parking garage yeah <laughs> cause for the T800 it's not that difficult you know He's, sure. a, he's a machine. He can just do this. Right. So a human being were doing this, you go, uh, can a person really do all this? The spin. I love it when they spin cars like that, going backwards and then going forwards. Oh, he grabbed onto the bumper. The hook hands are great. Look at that. I love that. <laughs> That's so great. Like a dummy. He's just <laughs> hanging on to the back of the car. Here he comes. He's climbing up. Boom, back windshield's gone. And she's grabbing. I don't think John. there's any, there's any way of having a more advanced Terminator than liquid, a liquid yeah, machine. It doesn't get any better. They've tried in the other movies. All well, of it seems like the other movies just have liquid on top of an yeah. endoskeleton, which right. kind of makes then, no sense. Yeah, and then he can double himself, or you know, she has the laser gun arm, or you know, they've just tried all these little gimmicks that just none of them have compared. Again, simple elegance we got. Yes. I'm trying to overdo it. This is a great moment, too. He's like, I don't want that near me. Get that out of here. And as he walks up, this great little moment where it just... Bloop. What, what is, <laughs> there had to have been mass that was missing from him somewhere. Yeah, probably like, you know, his off, butt. Off his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Always the butt. Get my butt back. <laughs> So again, just coming off a great action scene, you kind of slow it down again, and uh, you got to explain to Sarah now what's going on. John just wants a hug. She's checking for bullet holes. That's such a great character moment right there for both of them. You know, he hasn't had a mom in who knows how long, and this is their reunion, and she's only worried about his safety, not about, you know, 
I love you, I've missed you. Nothing like that. It's all about, it's all, it's all business with Sarah Connor. Yeah. I don't even th- know if she really does, like, care in that way. Right, yeah. Just because that's just not... She's lost sight of that. She, yeah. She's, she's only focused she's on not, the future. <laughs> she's not a person, really. She's anymore. not living in the present. She's yeah. living in the future. That's true. That's, that's kind of the whole theme of the movie. 100%. Love that line. That comes back later. Oof. Whew. Great stuff. Great stuff. I just love this movie. It's so good. It's got everything you could want. Everything <laughs> you could want. Well, it's definitely blue. <laughs> it's got a lot of blue. A lot of blue. Hey, they went with an aesthetic, you know? I need your helmet and your motorcycle. <laughs> Helmet, your glasses, and your motorcycle. And that shows you the difference between the characters. Yeah. Arnold walks in and says, I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Mm-hmm. The T-1000 goes, hey, that's a nice bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Little things like that, too. The breaking the locks. I love that. It's like, you know, yeah, he's incredibly strong. I like when that, whatever <laughs> it... Um, <laughs> Watch it lug nuts. Yeah. That's so good. I get when he's heavier than normal people. Yes, yeah, yeah. A few moments like that. Mm-hmm. This is a great setup for a shot, too. You know, he's holding the light so he can see, but that's, of course, lighting the scene as well. And you've got the light coming in from the window, the blue light mixed with the orange. I love that shot of the light coming get through get the bullet fog, holes. So get good. that foggy room. Yes. James Cameron is a huge fan of smoke. The first Terminator is, film is covered in Surprise, smoke. Surprise, Sarah's not smoking here. Yeah. She should be. They're at a gas station, right? There should be sick somewhere. Oh, yeah. People in movies like these are always smoking. It's always. Amazing. Anything made before 99, <laughs> usually the characters are smoking. And this is a great moment where, again, you know, we're getting this idea of, yes, the Terminator can learn. That's why he's, later in the movie, going to have some one-liners, and he's going to have, you know, he's going he's gonna to become more of a Arnold Schwarzenegger action guy. You know what I mean? More human than human. That's all <laughs> right. <laughs> Not quite a replicant. Not no. quite on that level. But no. He's, he's getting there. I like, love this shot, this time-lapse shot of him. He's standing there, scanning the horizon all night. And this is a callback to T1, right? So T1, I don't know if you know the story, but in T1 there's a shot where he has to break into a car just that same way. He punches a window. Yeah. And it was a real window. He actually had to punch because they didn't have the budget for fake glass. Yeah. And so this, obviously, they had the budget, but it was just a nice little callback. (laughs) Got the family station wagon. Now here's our family. Here's our family now. Throughout this film, this is right. where our mom, our road the mom, film. The mom, the kid, and the dog. <laughs> right, yeah. The dog <laughs> will become the dad. Sure. Um, but yeah, now it's a road film. They've got their own mission now um, to hide from this T-1000 until they can find a way to destroy it somehow. And here's another great <laughs> moment with these characters developing them and their relationship. See, what's cool is he, John Connor, is the only human in the room at this point. Oh, yeah, because, 100%. Because yeah. Sarah Connor kid. Doesn't, wouldn't bat an eye to him saying affirmative to things. Right. He's like, you gotta learn the slang, <laughs> <Right>. bro. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> No problemo. Cactus Jacks, what a great name. Yeah. <laughs> the smoke, you know. He, drove it, he drove it literally to its limit. Yes. Eating this cheeseburger, this messy cheeseburger. She's just, again, just so out of it. Just on another plane of existence. Now, that's a skill for the ages to be able to pour. Yeah oil perfectly yeah, into no a car funnel. without a funnel <laughs> that is a terminator skill yeah 
And this is an interesting little moment, you know, with John. Just kind of, again, he's been taught all these things all his life, and he's kind of just looking around at these kids just, you know, playing. And uh, remembers everything his mom has said to him about how humanity will just be annihilated one day. So this is what sends Sarah on her mission throughout the rest of the film, learning about how does this future come about? How what, what is Skynet? Where does it come from? Who builds the Terminators? Why? And they're only a few months away. Uh, yeah, I think they're. This is ninety four. Judgment Day is ninety seven. So yeah. they're just a couple of years off from when it's. He just said, occur. yeah, he just said in a few months he'll create. Right. Thing that'll lead to Skynet. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We've got to stop him. Yeah, we got to stop Judgment Day, hence the title. Um, and so she's human putting de- all together. Human decisions being removed from strategic defense is. Yes. Uh, frighteningly realistic. Self aware. Now, I don't think that's ever possible. <laughs> It's always Russia. Always Russia. Ay, ay, ay. Always going to be Russia. Everybody from the 80s thinks Russia is the <laughs> most, most evil <laughs> villain of all time. They I were blame, the I blame, villains in every blame, movie from 1980 Rocky. all the way yeah. till 1991 yeah. at least. I mean, they were defeated in Rocky. Come on. Rocky. They were Rocky's, defeated in Rocky Rocky's Rocky the ultimate, like, okay, <laughs> after Rocky IV, we can have a new villain now. Right. Like John says, they're our friends now. Um... So yeah, th- that's that whole conversation is what sends Sarah on her mission um, to become the Terminator herself. W- what a cool shot that was, just of a, of a snake. Skinned rattlesnakes. Um, sets up what this whole thing is, this little compound we're at here. One of Sarah's buddies. Well, the desert is the perfect place to lay low. Yeah. It's a place where life doesn't thrive. Right. Difficult to find someone in the desert. It's also a very orange place. Yep. Switch back from from the orange to the blue, or blue to the orange. I like how her her hand's on her gun. She's ready in case someone's lurking. Gotta watch out for the gyro pilot (laughs) from Mad Max. Mad Max. Mad Max is another good uh, Terminator connection because that was a inspiration for James Cameron yeah. George Miller's original Mad Max and Road Warrior of course which came out just a couple of years before T1 right another low budget action flick and he's a friend not a foe another good actor here don't know this guy's name but he's really good in this he's the Sala of the Terminator world yeah yeah I think of him that way too kind of the friend you go to when you need need some assistance. He's the friend with the family. Yep. Uncle Bob. Uh-huh. Uncle Bob. I love Uncle Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Enrique. <laughs> Just a blank, cold stare. He doesn't know what to do with a drink. He doesn't need a drink. I mean, you know, it's like, what would you do with that? (laughs) This is another great moment. It's like, the Terminator's becoming curious. He's like, what is this? This is a small human. Okay, I've never seen one of these. (laughs) It's just a silly moment. But Again, it kind of doesn't make sense, but it's just a funny moment. I like the humor, you know. Gotta have some levity throughout this apocalyptic robo-future film. And here's, here's the armory. Here's where we're going to gear up. <laughs> Great moments. Like, there's the moment like this in uh, uh, Tremors. Oh, yeah. Remember Tremors love, with Reba yeah. McIntyre? The gun wall shot. The gun Tremors wall, man. My favorite. Oh, I love it. Just more guns and more <laughs> guns. They're everywhere. It's hilarious. So good. 
grenade launcher. Yeah, this movie has an interesting sense of humor. Because it is, it is funny. Yeah, yeah. It, it has funny. a lot of levity. Mm -hmm. Most of it comes from Arnold. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Him, the fish out of water type thing. Sure. Where he's like yeah. learning humanity. His kind of nonchalant response to uh -huh. what we think of as bizarre things. Right. Like, most people don't have an armory in the desert hidden away. Right. Or his bizarre response to normal things like babies and sure. drinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll smirk. You know, he's got the John Con the John Connor smirk. You see them both sure. do the same smirk. He's yeah. Again, he's seeing things and picking up on them. Mimicking. That's why he's doing all this. Yeah. She's got the SIG back now. And this is ultimate Sarah Connor right here. Yeah. I mean, she just doesn't get any glasses. cooler. They're the glasses so cool. are so cool. She's got the glasses now, not Arnold. That's right. She's, she's, she's becoming the, one, the Terminator. She's the one hiding now. <laughs> right. It's great. It's great. It's all visual. It's all visual. If, if you're paying attention, the story is being told visually. And it's it's just genius. This is this is called cinema, folks. Now, this is the, the father-son bonding. 100%. Thing. Working on the car Working with your dad. Yep. Talking about life. Talking about his future, which is so odd. Sure. Well, that's kind of always what. Yeah, dad, sure. Dad bonding moments. Yeah, are right. Talking about the future. Not but exactly in this way. Not in this context. <laughs> Good push in to, uh -huh. to John here. Yep. Again, a very orange scene. Mm -hmm. Single lighting source. That's a great shot. Yeah, I like that. He is a little too monologue-y. I don't know. I feel like a lot of kids are, are pretty talky. There's a lot of kids that are that are you know, they'll they'll just talk to you for hours. Especially, I feel like kids like this that don't have an outlet for it really. Like his foster parents just ignore him. He's got sure. that friend now, but that guy's gone. <laughs> Thankfully, and he's alive. He hasn't. Uh, he's. I feel like he didn't really talk a whole lot to that friend about this stuff. Like this stuff, he sure. should talk to the Terminator about. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mind it. Um, <laughs> this is a great moment too. My favorite thing about this is that we get Sarah's POV. <laughs> right, yeah, this shot right here, we don't know it yet, but it's Sarah's point of view. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of annoyed. He's like, I'm not too I slow. I like that. So good. This little voice over here is great. Yeah, voiceover narration. We don't hate it. it when it's used right, it can really work. Yeah, because there's no one. Really there's works. no one for her to talk to. I mean, I think yeah. it's maybe not completely necessary yeah. here. And she has these tapes. But I think, be, yeah, and because it's a motif mm -hmm. from the beginning of the movie yep. and yep. into this. Well, even going off the first movie, the end of the first movie, she's recording right. all these tapes for John to listen to in the future. There's the thumbs up set up. Yep, that's it. The knife carving. What is she carving? Maybe it's the theme of the movie. Maybe it's maybe it's the whole film summed up in two <laughs> words. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> It'd be a little on the nose. It'd be a little on the nose. It's probably cool. not. <laughs> Great big Rambo knife she's using there. Loading up the truck with all the ammo and weaponry you could want. Seeing the family play. And she thinks, there's only one way to stop this. There's only one way to save all these people. And it's to literally kill a family. Man. Yes, exactly. It's that whole thing of, you know, she could go back in time and kill Hitler or any of these people when they're before they've done the things they've done. She's kind of pleased about it. 
A little bit. Yeah, she. I, I feel like she's a little torn, but she's she's very resolved that this is this is the way to go, especially. Yeah. After this now nightmare. This, now this, she's is, having this is this one dream. of my favorite sequences in the movie, actually. Incredible. This, um, this I think, could have been the trailer to the movie, and I would be sold. Oh, yeah, 100%. This is such a good uh, dream sequence yeah. that I think kind of sums up her entire... I feel like she has this dream every night. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah, this is why she's crazy. <laughs> this is... Yeah. You know, she sees this every night. That's her. It's her and the waitress. Her and John uniform from the Witches uniform Between from the first movie. The first and second films. Really good. Because I feel like this this was this is a memory almost like it's becoming a dream obviously now but it's this was her playing on the playground with John after yeah. that first film, kind of trying to be a normal mom. Such but she was always movie. thinking yeah. about this happening. <laughs> oh my goodness. She was always thinking this. Burning children yeah. in the playground will right. never, never not be a shocking visual. 100%. Huge shockwave. This, this, this is the buildings. most orange the movie gets. Yeah. Those miniatures are All so cool. All these miniatures cool. are great. They look incredible. Look at that on the hilltop it's no there. no wonder everybody was afraid of nuclear war. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> this this skeleton shot's my favorite. Oh uh, yeah, yes. that's it right there. There she is. Ah, that's so good. <laughs> Love that shot. Incredible. One of the most. I think she was asleep for maybe like two minutes. Yeah, yeah not either. <laughs> not either. They're still playing with the little kid. The sun's not even gone down yet. Can't no no rest for the wicked. Mm-hmm. A quantum of solace, if you yep. will. There it is. No fate. We've talked about this before in our Age of Ultron commentary that we did. Oh, yes. Go check that out on the channel now. Um, one of my biggest problems with Captain America and the Winter Soldier is that the movies surrounding it kind of diminish mm. the impact of that film. Right. And I feel that kind of resonates here as well. 100%. The no fate but what you make motif... Mm -hmm is completely neutralized by the existence of every movie outside of the first two Terminator movies. Correct. Especially 3, 5, and 6. Salvation, to me, you can still look at as a prequel to 1. And if you watch sure. it before 1, sure. it works. I guess. Um, and so, yeah. Um, John Connor explaining our, uh, our thematic idea here. I made him memorize. It's such a weird thing. Yeah. To say. I made my dad memorize this before I sent him. Which realistically, this version of John Connor doesn't do that. Correct. What's cool about this is that it's really not a time loop. Mm -hmm. If it is a time loop, then the movie's kind of pointless. Yeah, exactly. But it's only a time loop if you look at all the movies. Sure. A perfect sequel to this would be John Connor living a life realizing that his life is now meaningless yeah because he's no longer the he's no longer the resistance leader of the future uh -huh. he's not humanity's only hope anymore now he's just right. a guy yeah so uh, like a drama uh -huh. about a guy who <laughs> is the only person who knows how important he was right. and he, is now just a normal person yeah the only terminators would be in dream sequences he well, yeah, there'd be no Terminators at all, because right. it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. He would have dream sequences about him fighting Terminators. Yeah, it would just be... But he would be, never actually do it. it would he would just actually be probably a... become... He would either end up creating the Terminators himself somehow, <laughs> because he he would want to be That'd the be future sad. leader, or he would, I don't know, become a serial killer, maybe? Or no, something? yeah, like know. what I'm saying is he. I think he would just have to come to terms with being a yeah. normal person. I, know, I, think, I agree. But I, I think that would be interesting character it would. drama. It could be. It could be, for sure. It just wouldn't be an action Terminator. Movie. Right, exactly. There it is. The red eye of the Terminator is now Sarah Connor's. Rut row. Rut row. Sarah has become the Terminator. Yep. Which is great. Yeah, it's so great thematically and 
works for her character. It totally makes sense. Right in front of his kid. Yep. Cold. Right there. Calculated. Mm-hmm. She, saved, was, she was literally going to do it. Saved by a remote control car. Saved by saved technology. Saved by a robot. Robot saved him. Yep. Robot saved him. A human is about to blow him away. That's right. Because everybody knows what this movie is really about is how humans are evil and machines will save us. <laughs> I mean, she's just going to town with that assault rifle. I'm amazed anyone else in the building is alive. <laughs> she's shooting so frantically. It's blue. It's cold. Blue it's and cold, cold again. Yeah. It's back to the coldness. Not the warmth of the family. <laughs> the coldness of the killing. Because... The, the s symbolically orange represents to Sarah something very different than what it means to John. Sure. To Sarah, it's nuclear warfare. Mm -hmm. Right. But to John, it's the warmth of family and mm -hmm. and hope and dawn of a new day. Yep. And now we're into some more warmer light with yep. this family in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Again, visual storytelling. It's all there. This is a great, really great moment with these characters, you know, bringing... We only got that brief moment with Miles Dyson earlier. Now we're really getting to see him in a different light. And Sarah just cannot bring herself to do it. Especially now that she knows this is just, this is just a man. This isn't, this isn't some, like, megalomaniacal villain who's trying to, you know, yeah. take over the yeah. world. He's not, e he's not e an evil man at <laughs> no. all. He's just a guy. Yeah, he's just a guy. Who's really he's trying to job. better the world through yeah. technology. Yeah, exactly. And he is. Mm -hmm. Like, we know things will actually get better before yeah. the machines take over. Right. So, in, in his lifetime, he only ever helps people. Right. So he hasn't really done anything wrong mm -hmm. at all. It's just that eventually right. his advancements will lead to right. the future. Which I guess what the other movies are kind of trying to say is that eventually humanity will destroy itself regardless of right. who you kill yeah. or what you change. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is, I mean, th that exists within sure. the text of this movie, but right. it's not what it's really about. Yeah. Yeah, this movie's all about. And now, can, look, can humans be redeemed? the first time Sarah Connor is. Yeah, she's really hugging him because really she actually cares about. Reunited with her son. Yeah. She's still a person, deep down. She sees, I think, so much of Kyle and her and. Oh Jenna. yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's her. You know, she's remembering now. What set her on this path is her love for Kyle Reese, the passion that those two had for one another. We just got an I love you, I know scene. Yeah. Does Lucas know about this? I hope so. <laughs> Man, this, yeah. This the poor, this poor are, mother. Yeah, she's just, what is going on here? And this is another great moment where he's like, yeah, there's got to be an, a, a better on. way to show And then I like this. He's like, hey, let's go to your room and play with some toys because it's about to get real weird in here. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great moment to show John's maturity. Sure. Um, as a character, too. And then this is such a great <laughs> moment. Absolute just freaking out. Horror. What is he this doing? This is also a great effect yeah really good effect right here not even his arm yep. just someone else's prosthetic arm look at that really cool puppet crazy and it's the arm it's got to be the yeah. arm because oh, it's yeah. it's exactly what dyson would recognize yep he's like i know exactly what that is he sees it i've got day. one of those in my office <laughs> i've got Sitting a keychain i've got a keychain <laughs> 
And this is cool too because he's got the black glove. Yeah, he's going he full full glove. Luke Skywalker that's with right, the black glove. Right. Going to the dark side. Star Wars is another influence on James Cameron's oh, career majorly. That was what made him want to become a filmmaker. Of course, he was a, nothing but a truck driver. A truck driver, that's right. Until he saw Star Wars. Yep. Changed careers, and then he changed cinema. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anyone's made as much money from making movies as Jim Cameron. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's the most prolific blockbuster filmmaker next to Spielberg. Yep. Well, I mean, he, he has the highest, two of the highest yeah. grossing movies he ever, has, which I mean, is he, crazy. Financially, I think he's probably surpassed Spielberg. Yeah, by so what his movies have made. And not not cumulatively, but sure. individually. Sure, sure. Um, he hasn't made nearly as many films as Spielberg. Right, made a right. fraction of what Spielberg's made, but yeah. each of them are really good movies. This is great too. It's another one where Sarah really can't stand the guy still. Yeah, but you know, she's moved there's on good, from trying um, to kill him. There's good motion in the scene. Oh yeah, performances are just so oh, spot on. Even in the stillness, there's still activity through the through editing and through subtle camera shifts like this mm -hmm. one. Yeah, really good. Shift us to a different character's perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Sarah right behind Dyson. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yep, editors are definitely unsung heroes. They're... They say a movie's made three times when you write it, when you shoot it, and when you edit it. It's the final step, bringing the movie together. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the chip. The chip. It'd be great if Chip was a guy. Chip. chip a guy named Chip. Now you got another go person to kill? <laughs> no, no, it's, like. it's, it's computer chip. <laughs> There's like a security guard named Chip. Yeah, right. Sarah blows him away. <laughs> I told this guy Chip everything. He knows everything. He made copies of everything. We gotta go get him. So now the 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 mission shifts yet again to we're not gonna kill Miles Dyson, we're gonna destroy the MacGuffin. Yeah, the chip. The, the, the third arm. act MacGuffin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I love Which was shots. introduced in Act One. Yeah. But has blue, hasn't mattered until just now. Blue shiny road shots. Yeah, Great. get those roads nice and soaked. Yep. Everything's glossy. Mm hmm. Reflective. Yep. And blue. Now we've got a fourth member of the team. The team is growing throughout the film. Uncle Miles. Uncle Miles. Got Uncle Bob and Uncle Miles walking <laughs> into Cyberdyne Systems. The security guard's great, too. <laughs> the, the, the mustachioed the whole, security um, guard. Their whole demeanor's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're all kind of just, like, happy and fun. And then John Connor a, says hi. Yeah. And then you have a Terminator <laughs> back there. Yeah. Just scoping things out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see, now he's bringing in the one-liners, I insist. You know, like things like that. That earlier in the movie, he wouldn't have said stuff like that. But now, sure. it's a little more humor. And now Sarah and T-800. The duct tape. I'm pulling the duct tape real yeah. quick. Just that quick shot. Yeah. <laughs> John with the duct tape. Sarah and T-800 are acting more like a couple now yeah yeah they're in sync yeah you know? they, have, they have each other's back yeah yeah this guy's great too gibbons He's, is a great name. gibbons gibbons is really good yeah he's like what's going on you oh man he's like another mustache i think every security guard has a mustache did you notice this <laughs> it's possible it looked like it it's another mustache the 90s thing, I guess. The I stash know. doesn't last. That's the <laughs> motto of T2. Right. If you got a mustache, you're probably going to die. <laughs> or be seriously injured. <laughs> yeah, or get your kneecaps <laughs> blown off. 
can't get in. Security. It's alright, they'll just punch it. Yeah. <laughs> John Connor's got the hacking skills, so yeah. he's gonna hack in. It's I like cool. that they give the characters things to do. Sure. John Connor's not just there to just hang out. He's because there for because most he has of the hacking movie, skills. For most of the movie, he's done basically nothing practical. Right. Sure. He's actually kind of been more of a hindrance than anything. because <laughs> He's taught the Terminator humanity yeah. and slang. But he's gone and he's gone to get his mom, which was right. kind of a, a sidetrack. Right. And practically in the in but it's all character motivated plot. right that's what i right. like about it you know? which is fine story it doesn't have to be logical yeah story-wise it works yeah. but I, yeah like you said i like that they give him functionality mm-hmm. in the plot mm-hmm. although hacking an atm <laughs> and hacking cyberdyne industries is exactly the same a bit of a leap <laughs> john fire in the hole you tell most kids that, they have no idea what you're talking about. John Connor knows exactly what that means. I think they know now because of this movie. Probably. I would. Since I've watched this film probably more than almost any other movie. Terminator, Turret 2, Star Wars Trilogy, Indiana Jones Trilogy, and every Disney movie made from 1990 to 99. They're probably the movies I've seen the most. It's not a constant loop. I was growing up. Like that Jurassic Park reference to the right? Appreciate oh, yeah. that. And you got that light pouring in. You got the smoke. Yep. Good excuse to have smoke in the room. 100%. Well, it's about to get a lot smokier. Yeah. You got all that gas pouring and in. And here he is, back on the scene. We haven't seen him for a while. T-1000 has been out of the picture for yeah. a while. Yeah. He's had nowhere Look to go. Look at that shot. The fire in the <laughs> reflective shades. It's orange Come or blue. On. Orange or blue, baby. Orange or blue? Come on. Yeah, I like that they gave him the reflective shades. Yeah. It's clearly, like, it's his whole thing. Yeah. It's reflective it's surfaces. Him. He's just listening. And <laughs> here they come. A Blues Brothers level <laughs> right, <yeah>. police officers. Hundred <laughs> percent. You think Jake and Elwood were holding up the joint? <laughs> Spielberg in there. <laughs> they got SWAT teams. Cyberdyne Industries must be a pretty like cutting edge facility. Cutting edge facility, and you know, I mean. The T-800 has caused a lot of problems. It's true. The, the psychiatric ward and He hasn't killed mall. anybody, though. He hasn't killed anyone. You're right. He's knocked out a lot of people, though. But uh, they and, all think that he has because the T-1000 has been killing people. Right. And remember 1984. He's still wanted for all those sure, crimes. Sure, sure, sure. Even though it's not the same guy. It's not the same guy, but it looks like the same guy. It looks like him. So they think it's the same guy. <laughs> Not even a guy at all, really. <laughs> even though this is seven years later. Or ten years later, actually. In and that's the keychain I would want. Yeah. Easy money. <laughs> John Connor's catchphrase. Edward Furlong was on the Inside of You podcast. Oh really? I think wasn't he? Or was on? He was on some podcast I listened to recently. Very cool. Really great interview. He's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's a great uh, character actor. Mm-hmm. I agree. She put him in more, more things. It's okay. Don't worry. We're just gonna blow up the whole building. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of explosives here. He's like, I'm just gonna sit. Set like there. I said, sit down. Yeah, a little okay. set up for later. Uh huh. Another great shot right here. <laughs> really, they re- I mean, the budget is really... This is like the... Yep. Probably the most expensive sequence. Oh, yeah. Visually. Right. We're about to blow up a lot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this gun. This mini gun he's holding just... <laughs> <laughs> just taking him out. One car at a time. Phew. 
And yeah, he's very intentional about showing the cops running away and ducking, you know. Yeah, he's, he's not, not killing, killing anyone. He's just taking the cars out. As if he were really annoyed by all the sirens or something, you know. That, guy, that guy's uh, shotgun handling was not very safe. <laughs> just right in that other guy's face. The police officers, they're not soldiers, they're, they're just cops. They're not trained very well. There's some Renda cops here. Great. And then he's like, alright, I'm going to switch over now to the grenade launcher. <laughs> just cause some more damage and destruction. He's just causing a ruckus. He's really. just buying time, really, is what he's doing. And it just happens to look really cool. I like this. I like these POV shots again. Human casualties. Zero points. I like the point. It's like if he injured someone, it's point five yeah. human casualties yeah. or something. <laughs> and then they're gonna return fire. I like that little. You got a neck twitch there on the bullet. Yeah, head, that was cool. Yeah. Because you don't want to have it's it's a delicate balance between no reaction. Yes. And because he's still he's still physical. It's still yeah. Things still hidden. Right. He just doesn't feel pain. Exactly. So he doesn't like wince or, right. or like react mm -hmm, but his mm -hmm. body still takes injury mm -hmm. it's a great set yeah it's this little hallway this little hallway it's really very good. complicated um <laughs> John little Connor takes the direct cabinets. approach <laughs> John Connor he's a natural leader that's the thing I like about him too is that he you know, he just really does take charge in these situations. Well, he's kind of learned from the T-800 to, yes. to be active. And, of course, from his mom. Take direct action. Uh -huh. Do the most direct thing. Yeah. Using the crowbars. The gas masks are a good touch. Uh-huh. You can hide a lot of stuntmen with gas masks. Yep, yep. You can reuse stuntmen. That's right. And this is where everything goes awry. Um, right here, go slow mo, and that's your indication that uh oh. When slow mo happens, slow mo uh oh is is my <laughs> motto. Something's about to go down, and man, Dyson just he really took a lot takes of takes a there. lot of hits. It's really amazing that he's able to maintain consciousness. Sarah's in action mode now. Sarah's out, out McLeaning John McLean. Yeah, at every turn. Now, this performance is terrific. Yes. His it whole, really his is. His whole bleeding out, sweating uh -huh. profusely. Yep. The detonator, that's like <laughs> so good. It is. It really is. I like what her tactic here just fire off some shots and move. Because, again, she doesn't want to kill anyone either. She's yeah. not a Terminator. And they're not anymore. looking, so yeah. I don't really care. Right. right. Shoot the glass. They took the Hans Gruber approach here. You know? <laughs> was this after Die Hard? <laughs> this was. This is about four years after Die Hard. But glass, it's one of those things that is, it's very cinematic, you know, to see the glass shatter and sure. you know, fall and <laughs> it just breaks through the wall. What a great moment. <laughs> so good. The thing I love him walking love, through the thing walls. We love, that the thing we love about action movies is the kind of escapism yeah. you can experience through that. Because right. in real life, you can never blow up <laughs> can never, walls can or shoot through glass right. or have big explosions. Uh -huh. You never see anything like that in real right, life. So right. That's why we love seeing that. Yeah. Movie. And movies like this that do it profusely, it's it's like so they good. do it over the top. His breathing here is yes. just terrific. Yes. An unforgettable movie moment right here. Ah, oh, man. It's right on the trigger. And when this guy sees it, his reaction's great. <laughs> Get out of here. Back in an elevator. 
Look at this. The eyebrows with the mouth. It's just, oh, and then just the way it slows down. And then the shot. Oh, just a real quick. Boom. There it is. I don't know if that held any world records for biggest explosion or not, but it's a huge fireball. It's very orange. <laughs> it's, it's gigantic. <laughs> war zone. War zone. We're in a war zone. This is a great... Look at this slow movement and the smoke and the fire mm -hmm. and the headlight and go close in on the eyes. Again, the yeah, fire in the yeah. sunglasses. Ah. Oh. Movies blue, don't get better that, than that this. I've said it before. Cinematic color palette. Just looks great. Threat assessment. I like how they have to share this gas mask. She gives it to him first. She takes a little bit. There it is! The iconic line and makes a return. <laughs> Arnold has said that line in so many movies. But it all started with T1. And the original dialogue was, I will be back. Yeah. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. The line was, I'll be back. He wanted to say, I, I will, will be, be back. back. Yeah. And James Cameron said, no, you have to say, I'll be back. <laughs> and James Cameron always gets his way on every movie set. Oh, you got that dummy in there. Look at that. You get that metal skeleton yeah. shining through. And it's switching back and forth, though. Yeah. Dummy. And then the wide shot... That's a dummy. Stick. Is Arnold? No, that's a dummy. No, that's Arnold. That's Arnold. Arnold. Yeah. There he is again. Still him. Heavy, heavy makeup, Arnold. Yeah. yeah he's he's not getting shot, so. Yeah. We're all on the knees. These guys are going to need a lot of surgery. <laughs> I love that too. This was a cool thing. I wanted him to use this more. Gas grenades to the back. I mean, that's <laughs> got to leave a big like bruise. It's great. Although they are wearing body armor, so I guess it wouldn't be... Motorcycles inside Look the building. That. And it's flaming. on fire! <laughs> it's a ghost, it's ghost rider. rider, man! It's a ghost Where's rider. Nicolas Cage? Nicolas Cage would make a great Terminator. He would. Make a great John Connor. Future John Connor. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'd love him. He could have been, been that movie you were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, small indie drama. Yeah. John Connor, not as a future resistance leader. That's right. That's right. The simple life of John Connor. <laughs> Hold this. <laughs> and he's learning. Look at that. He knows where the keys are. John Connor taught him. Taught him well. He has good neck movements. He does. Very uh, hydraulic neck mm -hmm. movements. It's a terrific performance. He, he doesn't really get enough credit. A lot of people say Arnold, you know, he's not a great actor. True life think, begs to differ. I think he's fantastic. I really do. I think he, this proves it. The, the, the development of this character in this film is really phenomenal. And yeah, True Lies. He's great in True Lies. Oh no. He's been in some bad movies, but I don't, I don't think he's ever really that bad. Sometimes, like here, he's great. Well, Hercules in New York is... Hercules in New York. It's where it all started. Such a pity. <laughs> Such a sad <laughs> Everyone's got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's nowhere to go but up. The after thing is, he here. followed that up with Conan, which is really good. Yeah. And then he did T1, which is fantastic. That is a motorcycle Look shot. at that. For the ages. What a shot. And this guy climbing on the helicopter. Look at this. This is crazy. And this is a great effects moment here. There we go. I could have wow. done, done with some more of that. Look at that. <laughs> drooping through another, the another great reaction else. too get out it's a call back to T1 <laughs> he just jumps probably broke both of his legs oh he's pretty low I guess maybe alright incredibly low for a helicopter <laughs> I don't think they got look at that shot this. did you see that this yeah, is still a I know. one long take it's real this helicopter pilot's incredible this is probably a lethal yeah, what are the permitting they had to get to do all this? I don't think they got any. I think they just did it. <laughs> they didn't on T1. That's when I feel like they did. A little too expensive of a movie to not get permits. And this is smart, too. Putting the body armor in the window. 
really smart choice. Thankfully, the there's, thankfully there's a ton of guns in this <laughs> police vehicle. Look at this shot. These, this chase... I mean, are there any better chases? I mean, maybe Mad Max Fury Road, I guess. It's incredibly low to the ground. Look at that. <laughs> it's like right literally going to, the car. to hit a, Literally going to hit a car. Yes. It yeah. It's like barely above the cars. Lots of gunplay here. We like lots of gunplay in movies like this. Bullets. Sarah should really be driving. Though. Different kinds of guns. Yeah, she probably Whoa. should. Under the overpass. I don't think I've ever seen that Come since. Come on. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that since. No, a real, who would? A real who in their right mind would do that? A real helicopter flying under an underpass like that. These daredevil stuntmen are just incredible. Should really be an Oscar category. Yeah. Stunting. It has to be. I mean, I feel like they're on their way. Yeah, Fall Guys seem to be like the, the big thing. But well, John Wick Four. I mean, you know, Stahelski and and Leach. Those two guys have really campaigned for it. Yeah. And every movie they do proves that there has to be a stunt category because these guys are risking so much for our entertainment. They deserve at least a little gold statue. Dang! Look at that. Oh, there goes the helicopter. Got a real dummy in there too. And there goes the truck. I like that they both lose their vehicles at the same time. Yeah. They both have to look for new new modes of transportation now. It's an amazing amount of bullet holes in this thing. <laughs> I'm surprised it? they're all alive. <laughs> it's that body armor. I'm telling you, the body armor in the window. Saved them. <laughs> this is great. I love that, again, they, the, the heroes always get the most rinky-dink, small, junky vehicle. And the and the villain gets the best, biggest vehicle. There's no need to kill that guy. <laughs> he's a Terminator. It's complete, completely it's unnecessary. What, it's what he's designed for. Completely unnecessary. <laughs> this guy's a bad guy. What are yes. you, some kind of villain? Yeah, he's definitely the bad guy. <laughs> that look. Here he comes. The giant 18-wheeler. Get in the chicken coop. Full of nitroglycerin. <laughs> we need your truck. The chicken coop truck. Yeah, love I love it. it. It's just <laughs> this tiny little truck they can squeeze into. Praise the Lord. <laughs> One of the greatest Christian films of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy flips over the side. Yeah. Good little stunt there. I gotta think that James Cameron's in his element with this big trucker. Oh, uh, yeah. He drove many of these trucks. He's like, I want to destroy this truck. One time I saw a chicken coop trucks. on a pickup truck. Yeah. And <laughs> just couldn't get out right. of my head. Yeah, trucking. You Had to have see a lot of vehicles. He's great at chases. Is he staying under 65 because of what Sarah said earlier? I don't know. It's a good question. I never thought of that. I think this truck just can't go any faster. It's possible. <laughs> Look at the sparks. I just love the sparks, you know? Yeah. Tons of sparks everywhere. This chase reminds me a lot of the chase from the Batman. Yeah, yeah. The penguin it chase. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got sure. a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Running and gunning, man. Huge fan of running and gunning. You drive, I'll shoot. Yep. From, term, from not Terminator, <laughs> from Transformers. These stunt, the stunt guys doing this are just, it's crazy. Hanging outside the doors like Ooh, this. hit that curb really hard. Yeah. 
And there's rear projection here, obviously, when it's close-ups on Arnold, but it really doesn't look bad. It's yeah, it looks, blurred it enough. Looks okay. Or, you know, the focus is on him, so you don't really even pay attention to the background much. And it switches so quick between the shots that you don't really think about it. This is one of my favorite shots. <laughs> it's just tearing him up. Just the thing point about, the blank thing about, range with the a thing machine about the, gun. The T-1000, though, is that it doesn't need a face. Correct. It doesn't need eyes. Right, to but see. we've seen earlier that it it does get damaged and it can right, right. You know, get knocked down and it can kind of look at that the light coming between mm-hmm. uh, the lighting out so of the blue into the orange cinematography. Yep, back into the orange now. The lava factory. Yep, making that lava. We make lava here. <laughs> I like that little roll. I like. I've always liked that. I thought that was cool. How he like balls himself up like yeah. that. It's a droidica. Yeah. Master destroys. And then here comes the liquid, liquid nitrogen, like the coldest and hottest things ever. Yep. Fire and ice, baby. Blue that's, and orange. Yep. That's that the shot, juxtaposition. That shot just summed it up perfectly. Yep. It's the most orange and the most blue. Uh-huh. And you got the smoke. Gets. That's the thing about nitrogen. You got smoke with the nitrogen. Yeah, you got the smoke. Well, you got smoke from everything. That's it. It's the smokiest, bluiest, yeah. orangiest yes. the movie can get. It's the most intense and extreme. Yes. This is how movies should look. This is, this is, <laughs> this is especially movies like this. You get the fire and ice motif as well, because mm-hmm. you get the... Hydrogen is basically like liquid... Lava, I guess, or like ice lava. Like if lava was ice, it'd be this. <laughs> sure. So both the Terminators you have encased in their uh-huh. lava counterparts. Uh-huh. It's a really, what cool, really amazing cool visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> the arm, I love that. His face, his reaction to it. It's so it's good. It's an amazing puppet. <laughs> so cool. Covering his face in snow like that is really cool. Frozen hide a lot of everything. And he's just a one shot. Here's the line. Yes! Boo! Look at that. It just shatters. Uh, incredible looking film. It's pretty good. Good sound design. Yeah, the sound design is really good in this, too. Very believable, very immersive. Sarah's on her last leg. He's very, he's very close to that lava. He is. Should be sweating. If he was a human, he'd be sweating. Well, I'm pretty sure he'd be on fire if he was a human. <laughs> I don't think you can get that close to lava in real life. Uh, the lava is melting. The demon thousand. Now, you think <clears throat> it would evaporate it? I don't know, I guess metal doesn't evaporate. It's metal, yeah. It's liquid metal. Love this stuff. This looks crazy. It's real, like, magnetized yeah. metal. It's but it's good. liquid. <laughs> it's crazy, you know? <laughs> oh, look at that. There's a big pool of it now. He's, he's a big puddle now. <laughs> he's a puddle terminator. T-1001. Puddle metal. I mean, that would have been a terrific way to end the movie with that awesome action sequence. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You could have ended it right there. He blasts them, he shatters, and they're home free. But no, there's more to come. Now it's time for the lava factory action sequence. He really doesn't have to look like this police officer anymore, but no. But why not? <laughs> really? <laughs> why not? Robert Patrick. He's just too good. I would much rather have an actor than a CGI blob. Right, I'm just saying he just, he just doesn't have to look that way I anymore. Yes. There's, there's no reason to dress like a cop. Or, but it's a movie. I mean, that is his fate. Like, he looked like that when he was brought yes. into right, right. this world. But mm-hmm. I guess those are the clothes he's been wearing the whole time. So. And now it becomes a sort of claustrophobic 
chase. Well, it's the exact same thriller. ending as Terminator One. Right. It's in the big mill. It's just in a in a lava factory yeah. now, instead of a steel, steel press. Yeah. yeah. This machines, is great. It's it, machines making machines. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it harkens back to that first one because it's... This is that final chase. And I like that emotion That's that he showed in shot. telling John to go. You know, he wasn't less like, John, go. He's like yelling at him, like, you need to go. Again, he's becoming more Well, human. he's learning that people respond better to yelling. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Great, right out of the smoke. Out of the blue. <laughs> out of the blue and into the orange. <laughs> <laughs> blue and orange are battling now. Yep. It's a great fight. I like this Man, fight film is so but grainy. This one it's not they're not punching each other. They're they're slamming each other into walls. That was a little janky, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't mind I don't mind that at all. I like this too a lot. I don't even know how you pull it's it off. Such a it's, cool thing. Yeah, bizarre and crazy. All in one shot. And that, oh man. It's like the opposite arm. of Terminator 1. Mm hmm. Crushed everything but the arm. Right. I like that. He like kind of cleans himself up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, it's cool. And this is this is where it all goes down. This is where it all kind of ends, comes to a head. Again, a lot of sparks. This is the most dangerous yeah. place to work on Earth. Right. <laughs> There's no way any FDA regulations have approved of this. Right. Somebody call OSHA. There is railing, though. Unlike in Star Wars, where nothing has railing. <laughs> this, this set is all railing. <laughs> I like that lowering in by the chain. That's just a cool shot. When, uh, that reminds me of a shot from Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. I think it's from Temple of Doom. Oh, no, now he's Padme. Right. On the conveyor belt of the droid factory. Why didn't James Cameron direct a Star Wars movie? He should have. You get Spielberg to do Phantom Menace. Uh -huh. You get James Cameron to do Attack of the Clones. Yep. And then Ron who, Howard. Who, Ron Howard for three? It was going to be Ron Howard or it was going to be Zemeckis, I think. A Zemeckis for three would be amazing. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, man. Pull right through his head. Uh, so cool. A little oh, bit. No. A little I love, bit. I love I'm not the mistakes some, some of these, some of these effects. I'm not, they look. They're incredible, but some of them are a little dated. I guess they are. I don't know. I, I don't. I, to me, they hold up. To me, they hold up just fine. I don't. I, be, the don't take me works, out of it. The story keeps you invested yes. so much. Yes. It's not. It's not anything to take you out of it. I've seen worse. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I've seen worse today. In the past year. Yeah. This is so good. Now, why doesn't he just mimic her voice? Oh, he's about to. He'd rather her do it. Oh, man. This is so good. Oh, yeah, here he is. He's back. Cuts him. In half. Thankfully, he found a sword in, in somebody's locker. <laughs> or a spear. It's just a, it's just a metal <laughs> pole. He's being pulled off one of the rails. How did they do his arm? Who knows? Must just be a weird glove. <laughs> it's incredible. It's probably just a glove he has on. It's kind of weird looking. And again, I like the way they fight. It's It's not like... They're not martial artists. They're like yeah, they're like brawlers that are just kind of almost like wrestlers, just kind of slamming <laughs> each other into things. You know? Yeah. The um, <laughs> this this hit right here. Oh. Well, not this one, but the, the one, one coming ahead. Yeah. I think this is it. 
Yeah, that's oh, so good. I love that that's shot. That's a great one. And then again, very, very just mechanical, like yes, just, yes, just piece, hunks of metal slamming against yeah. together. Yeah, look at this makeup. It's just really amazing to behold. They were able to accomplish. That's got to be a prosthetic arm he was on. I guess. I don't know how they did that makeup effect. It yeah. must be a full, full puppet. No, this is Arnold. This shot, shot. This shot is Arnold. Yeah, look at that. This shot is Arnold, but I yeah. think a couple shots ago it was a, it was a puppet or something. I can't tell. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like him trying to reach back. Get it? Can't get it. Can't reach the gun. That electricity coming off of him too. Harkens back to T1. And this is it. You think this is over. T-800's done. How are they going to defeat T-1000? Sarah Connor's got her shotgun. That's all she's got. Well, at this point, isn't, I mean, it, isn't it already over? Didn't they already stop Judgment Day? Yeah, but T-1000's still out here. So if he's still out but there, what, they what difference reverse does it engineer make? him. What difference does it make if T-1000 kills all of them now? Because Dyson's already dead, and so is the ship and everything. Well, you have T-1000. He would just go to someone and say, hey, examine me and make Terminators. Yes. He would find a way to make the future come about, I think. Alternate power. Still here. He's got to get the big metal rod out of his chest first. Great. I just like I like simple effects like that too. A, like a lot of what happens to the T eight hundred reminds me of the movie Logan. Oh sure. There's a lot of similar like mm -hmm. oh, yeah. instances of taking a lot of punishment. Well and it's it's that similar story of a guy sure. kinda of refining his humanity through this kid. Sure. Yeah, very much uh but Logan can feel like, pain, so it's a lot Yeah. It's a lot much more right, depressing movie. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Kind of about feeling pain, actually. Mm -hmm. Logan's like the opposite of T two, right? This is great. Linda Hamilton also has a twin. I'm not sure which one I would even trust. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah, a twin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. The one arm. You don't have to. The do one arm shotgun. I guess her arm's so injured, cool. maybe? Yeah. She got the blade stuck through it a second ago. That's right. Yeah, that's so cool. One arm shotgun. And then she's out Throw of Throw it in his face. She's out. Couldn't get him over the edge. She's like, let me try it one more time. No, definitely out. At <laughs> this moment right here. <laughs> The finger wag. It's great. And then here he comes. <laughs> Look at this. Great slow-mo action hero moment. Out of Get the blue. Down. Literally out of the blue. Out, out of the blue and he's going into the orange. Boom! That's a Grenade trigger. launcher to the face. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. He shot him center mass. Oh, that's so creepy and weird. Kick him. <laughs> Look at his face. Ah. He just falls. He just falls right in the pool of lava. It's too bad what the lava looks like water. But. And I love that he writhes in pain, even though that makes no sense. He's obviously you know trying to get out, I guess. But you've got to have the um, look so cool. The come up and the we, our villain needs to suffer for us to feel. Yeah, and he's switching back to all the people he was oh, earlier, gosh. which is a cool touch. Stepmom, the security guard, the helicopter pilot. I'm not sure why, but. It's, it's a cool visual. Yeah, I mean, it just it looks weird, you know? <laughs> it just looks weird. It's supposed to look weird. It's a weird thing. 
And, you know, he was able to accomplish all this after he did the abyss. Yeah, of course. Um, the abyss had, a, had all the water effects mm-hmm. that led to our liquid metal, yep. which is more difficult than water, kind Way of, more. kind of. It's, I mean, it is in some ways because water is transparent, which is its right. Own but it's what they're doing with it here. I mean, this is such a small thing. Yeah, this is throughout the whole film. Yeah, he had that idea for the liquid metal in uh, T one, but he couldn't figure out how to pull it off. So he's just like, "I'll well, save that for the sequel, I guess." <laughs> That's another great humorous line. What would a Terminator do on vacation? Let's did, see that. Who said that? What? Did T eight hundred? T eight hundred said. Yeah, that? I said I need a vacation. I need a vacation. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of an eye roll one. <laughs> I think it's great. It's again now at this point he's basically human. In my opinion, <laughs> he's basically a human in a machine's body. Yeah. So he has all the witty one liners now. Hasta la vista, baby. I'm amazed that there have no cops or fire department people showing up yet. No. It's been like an hour. No, it's only been like 10 minutes. I guess that's true. Why didn't you do this immediately? <laughs> well, they're being chased by a Terminator. There's lava all around you. <laughs> it's done. There it is. The one ring. Yep. The Mount one, Doom. The one chip. No, it's not it's over. It's too bad his other eye doesn't move. Yeah. It's the one thing that they could... I guess the servo is broken. Yeah, yeah, it's broken. That's my my head cannon. The red light's on, but it can't move. It's and the red light is position. weird because it's like sticking out. Yeah. It looks it looks very strange, but whatever. It's inconsistent. Doesn't matter. You don't care about that. You <laughs> care about the characters. Doesn't matter. You care about the characters. Movie's what they're going through. Boy, thick. <laughs> Ah, uh, this just kills me. Pulls it over. The music is great. The the shots, the editing, performances, the writing, direction. This line. Hmm. Ah, great stuff. <laughs> I always get choked up at the scene. Always. I'm glad. I'm glad you are impact as impacted by this as you are. It's sort of, this is my Iron Giant. I was like, yeah. the way you feel sure, about Iron sure, Giant, yeah. I feel about this. I mean, I would be on the ground <laughs> dying if this was Iron Giant. I'd be. We've got to do an Iron Giant commentary. I don't think I could do it. We've got to do it. I don't it. think I could we even speak to. a word while, while, while watching it. It's one of your favorites. we got to do one for Raiders. I'm just in awe every time I watch it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I like that he maintains eye contact and as they lower him. It's got to be Sarah. It's got to be Sarah, yes. Yeah, John could never do this it. This is her This is her finally putting to rest mm-hmm. yep. the trauma she's been enduring. Yeah. For years. And it's sad for her because, as she said earlier, this is John's father figure. This is a guy who will never, you know, get mad at him. This is kind of the perfect father figure in many ways, sure. but she has to let him go. This is a great effect. The, the fire. I mean, just definitely looks, looks better incredible. when you slowly lower someone yep. into lava mm-hmm, than mm-hmm. the writhing around. Right. Yeah, that fire effect. It just look at that. And this final moment. Oh, the cherry on the top. The thumbs up. Oh man. Uh, great. Roll credits. Yep. <laughs> wow. I mean, you could have cut it there, really. You could have. It it's good to have this little mother-son moment. Reconnect yeah. with them. 
That's what the story's about. It's about a human, mm-hmm. human story. I'm saying have the epilogue. Sure, uh, sure. Then. Yeah. And then back on the wet yeah. blue yeah. road with the narration. And uh, now there's hope because the future is not set. They don't know what's going to happen They can begin to learn the value of human life. Yes. And there's our... Uh, there's our theme kicking back I in. I could have done with a sunset shot. Sunset? Yeah, Or I a guess. sunrise. Yeah. The road is kind of the thing, though. The road is like the road ahead, you know? Sure. What is what is to come? We don't know. What's I'm just saying the from the blue night into yeah. the gold sunrise. Yeah. Driving, them driving off. Mm-hmm. Kind yeah, of like a, a more uh, better reflect T one. Yeah, yeah, T one ending. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. What a film, you know. What do you think of this? Is this is this because for me it's in my top twenty of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are you? I think it's terrific on that level. I think or? it's. I think it's completely solid. Okay. I think it's a you know, I think it's a terrific film. Lots. To praise about it, obviously, oh, yeah. and praising it for over two hours now. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just when I saw it, and yeah, just kind of, it, it's just I know it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it doesn't like it doesn't affect it doesn't yeah. affect me. Yeah, it doesn't it's not it doesn't have the impact the same way it affects yeah. a lot of other people. Sure. I don't, I don't. I'm not like rushing to defend this movie uh-huh. or. Uh-huh. To sing its praises, or uh-huh. I think it's great. Um, I think it. I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's timeless in a lot of ways. Yeah. But. Uh, I think it's it, just, it is also still to me, so much, a product of its time. Mm-hmm. It's important, yeah. I think, that, it is, a movie, set in this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Made in right, this time. Right, right. It's a terrific like encapsulation of mm-hmm. late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. cinema yep so I, I recognize it as an important historical landmark mm-hmm. in, in action cinema right and special for special effects and blockbusters yeah um, it just doesn't necessarily resonate with me on an emotional level okay in any like profound way okay. but I think I think that it does have some interesting things to say, like we were saying earlier, yeah. subtextually. Right. Um, it has some great imagery, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. James Cameron's filmmaking style is... He's done a lot of documentaries, which isn't, isn't really True. surprising to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, again, it's very economical. Uh-huh. It's very straightforward. Yep. Everything is objectively shot. Right. And there's not a lot of style and flourish, but that makes is, me I mean, that makes me love it. You when know you what think I mean? about again the color, like I get blue and orange, but <laughs> taking that like kind of to the extreme. Sure, of course, yeah. It's really stylish. I it, think sure. it really has a lot of style to it. Um, it's not necessarily flashy. There's not a lot of flashy camera work or anything right, like that, right? Or editing or anything. Yeah. Um, which is why I think it is so accessible, though. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. That's uh, why James Cameron's the... He's the biggest, he's the biggest popular selling, yeah. <laughs> filmmaker ever. It's the most Him and just Spielberg. like stripped mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. baseline yep. film language yes. everyone yes. understands. Correct. Without having to know uh-huh. what it's about. Right. You just get it. Yep. To me, it's a perfect film. Uh, like I said, one of my favorites of all time. Every time I watch it, I like it more. <laughs> If that's possible. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening with us. Hope you had a great time. Make sure you check back to the channel soon for more commentaries. We're going to be doing a Terminator podcast this week. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great time. We'll see you next time right here on The Real World.